Hey folks, so today I want to talk a bit about the term healthy and how I reframe that for my clients uh, because honestly the term healthy has become really meaningless in modern Western society. Uh, I have a lot of clients who are doing all sorts of different kinds of diets or ways of eating that are sit telling me that they're trying to eat healthier. And until I actually hear exactly what they're eating day to day, I have no frame of reference for what they mean by that. There are so many fads and um, uh, different um, trends in terms of like what a healthy diet is or you know how to eat healthy that uh, people have all these very skewed ideas of what a healthy diet is and by and large what I see is that people on some emotional level are equating healthy with being miserable <laughs> with restricting themselves, with depriving themselves, with this idea of the cleanse, right? And a lot of times people are doing these um, vegan cleanses or like these juice cleanses and uh, obviously they're not able to sustain it for a very long time. It just becomes this kind of like crash diet thing where it's like, okay, I'm just gonna drink juice and, and eat salads, <laughs> right? And they're able to maintain that for like a couple weeks, maybe a month, and then they can't sustain it anymore. Uh, and so what happens to a lot of people and why people struggle so much with uh, getting to a healthy lifestyle to getting to a healthy diet is that they're swinging back and forth between this very high and refined carbohydrates um, standard American kind of junk food diet where they're getting a lot of calories but no actual nourishment right no actual nutrients to these like fad cleanses, like where they're eating salads and juices and things like that uh, for all their meals. And that has a little more nutrients in it, um, but it's also very low calorie and it's not nourishing. And so they may feel really good for a week or two on that, but then as they get into like three weeks, a month, they start to feel this like de deprivation, this restriction. They start to feel miserable. They start to get grumpy and irritable. Um, and so then they swing back to this high, you know, they start binging on cookies and they go out and get pizza because their body is actually asking for nourishment, right? But neither of those diets are giving them true nourishment. And so what I really like to do for my clients is reframe a healthy diet as a nourishing diet, as a building diet, as a diet that is giving your body all the building blocks it needs to really sustain long-term good health. And this type of diet should not be like a crash diet, cleanse diet that you can do for a few weeks and then feel miserable. It should be something that you can sustain long-term and not feel deprived, not feel restricted, but feel amazing in your body because you're getting nourishment. So I like to throw out the word healthy and let's talk about nourishment. So uh, there are these really interesting phenomenon where I think because of the low fat craze that really took a few generations out, honestly, like really messed up a lot of people's relationship with food. Unfortunately, this, this low fat craze that was like 70s through the 90s, um, where people feel guilty for eating things like a ribeye or like pork ribs or eggs or cheese but they don't feel guilty for eating things like fruit salad or um, a salad with a bunch of nuts and seeds on it or even things like pasta or bread or cookies, right? There's this really interesting kind of puritanical sense that a lot of people have really embodied around animal foods and fats being dirty or heavy right and then these very uh, low calorie foods very low nutrient foods being like clean and cleansing and healthy and the problem is is that those kinds of foods first of all the refined carbohydrates they just really like the pasta and bread they have higher calories but there's really no nourishment in them there's really no um 
nutrients that we're getting from them that the body can easily utilize. All the body is getting for it is some fast, quick burning energy from the refined carbohydrates that you can burn through in like an hour and be hungry again, right? Depending on your activity level. And then like the salads, the nuts, the seeds, the fruit, uh, there are some nutrients in those, right? They're whole foods. There are some nutrients in it, but it's very low fat. It's very low protein and it's missing a lot of the essential nutrients that we really need. And so there are times when it makes sense to do a short cleanse. There may be times when your body, especially during certain times of the year, is asking for like lighter plant foods with less fat, less protein, and that's normal. Our bodies go through these detoxification cycles where we do want maybe just some light fruit juices or some salads or some nuts and seeds. That is totally fine, but we should never think that we can sustain that long term and really maintain nourishment. That would be a cleansing cycle in the body that should be time limited. But instead of then going back to this kind of junk food diet that is a lot of people's standards, we need to go back to a truly nourishing building long term diet. Uh, we can see this in history as well, right? So there are a lot of uh, traditions um, in which, um, well, let me rephrase that. There are extremely few <laughs> traditions, um, uh, traditional cultures that uh, don't eat a lot of animal foods, that don't eat a lot of animal fats, that are eating pretty low fat, uh, plant heavy diets. Um, one of the most common ones that's pointed to is uh, the traditional, cult traditional culture in northern India, which is a traditional vegetarian diet. It's one of the only ones that's ever been observed. But they're eat traditionally eating a huge amount of dairy and eating a huge amount of eggs to supplement, right? And so we just don't see these plant-based diets existing uh, traditionally. Um, now we do see it occasionally in more recent history with these certain religious sects, right? And we would see these periods of fasting in traditional cultures for religious or spiritual reason, re reasons, right? And uh, nutritionally speaking, eating a like plant-based diet is really a fast, right? It's a form of fasting because it's missing a lot of essential nutrients. And so we see in traditional cultures, they will either go through these periods of, of true fasting or they will do these plant-based diets for specific cleansing, ritual, religious purposes. Um, but these were either specific like priesthood kind of classes, right? Like spiritual classes or um, just like short-term experiences that people would go through as like a rite of passage, right? These are not like the long-term sustainable diets that traditional people would eat. So cycling through that may be appropriate at different times in your life if you're called to it, but at some point you're going to get that feeling of not being fulfilled anymore, of needing something, right? And this is where a lot of people go into back to the junk food standard American diet, right? Where they're eating a lot of high refined carbohydrates, but that's not actually what the body is asking for. The body is actually at that point asking for tools to start building and saying, okay, we cleansed, now we need to build. Um, so how does the body build? First of all, we need the fat soluble vitamins that uh, are only gonna be found in animal foods and animal fats. So this is the animal form of A, D, and K2. And all traditional people have very high amounts of these nutrients in their diet from one source or another. This could be from organ meats like liver. This could be from uh, the animal fats like, like bone marrow or the suet, like the fat around the kidneys. This could be from egg yolks or this could be from raw fermented dairy. Um, all traditional cultures get one of those sources or more in their diet and they know that the animal fats are very important uh, and they will this is where the term rabbit starvation comes from right where if people are eating meat that is too lean for too long they start to get weird <laughs> right they start to develop some really strange mental and physical health conditions and traditional cultures will tell you all about this right that if they can't find uh, animal foods with enough fat on them um, especially like maybe during the worst part of the winter when the animals are getting really lean, uh, they will go on these massive journeys, right? Like even Lewis and Clark would describe um, the native people telling them about this, right? That they would walk, you know, 
hundreds of miles to go get like whale and seal blubber if they could only find lean deer inland, right? It's It was very, very important. It is very, very important to these folks to make sure that they're getting a good source of animal fats in the diet and not eating too much lean protein. And if you think about it, uh, a lot of people in modern Western society, if they are eating animal foods, they're eating the very lean ones, right? They're getting the skinless chicken breast. They're getting the leanest cuts of like flink steak, right? Uh, they're trimming the fat off, off their steaks, off their briskets, right? Um, and so I think there is a mass issue of rabbit starvation in our population for a lot of people who are trying to eat healthy. Um, and then uh, we also do need to talk about the protein though, because protein is also essential. Um, and from the protein, we're usually getting the, the animal-based proteins, we're usually getting the B vitamins, um, which are much more highly absorbable when they're coming from animal sources. There's some interesting work showing that even the plant foods that you can get B vitamins from, they're not absorbed as well. Um, and then the amino acids, which uh, the proteins, like they undergo every, the, it's, it's a form of amino acids, a form of protein that are enzymes, right, that allow all these different uh, chemical reactions to happen in your body. Uh, and a lot of people get really afraid of protein. And uh, as long as you're eating it with an appropriate amount of fat, there's no problem, right? Um, your body will stop you from eating protein when it's satiated from protein and when it's got enough protein. Think about this. Try thinking about binge eating on steak. You can't do it, right? No one who is a binge eater is binging on something like steak because your body just shuts yourself off at some point uh, when you have reached your protein threshold. So you really don't have to worry about eating too much protein for the most part, unless you're doing like a very, very strict ketogenic diet for um, some, some therapeutic purpose. Uh, but for, the mo for most people, you don't have to limit your protein. Your body will stop you from eating protein when you have filled up. You cannot overeat protein. Um, so uh, these are very important to have in the diet as well. And most people who are stuck on this kind of cleansing form of healthy diet, uh, their body is starting to crave fat and protein at some point because it's been through the cleansing cycle and now it wants to rebuild. But instead of that, people are feeling guilty about eating things like eggs and steak and dairy and things like that. And so they're going back to the pasta and the bread because their body needs something and then they're stuck in this endless cycle again where they start feeling terrible and they say oh i need to go on another cleanse right whereas if after the cleansing cycle if they are able to go back into eating these very nourishing animal foods uh that would be satisfying for their body right and they wouldn't have as much of the urge to binge on the refined carbohydrates which are not giving them those essential nutrients so they're not giving your body that signal of shedding off it's just saying we haven't gotten what we need yet eat more eat more right and this is where people can eat a whole box of donuts because their body wants something after being deprived and they uh aren't getting it <laughs> from what they're deeming as okay right to, to like somehow they've decided that there's more okay to eat the donuts than than the steak uh, whereas if you went and you ate the steak you ate the bone marrow you ate the eggs right you ate the the salmon uh, that would actually give a signal to your body okay we're getting these building blocks we're getting the AD and K we're getting the B vitamins we're getting the amino acids um, so this is really what I want to talk about when I talk about nourishment we want to talk about what is giving your body the building blocks uh, if you are eating a really nourishing diet, you should be feeling satisfied, right? Now there is an issue. If you have really serious gut overgrowth, you might not feel satisfied until you have the refined carbohydrates. Some people have these very intensive like bread or pastry or pasta cravings. Uh, and sometimes that does have to be pushed through. Um, but it's much easier to push through those cravings and allow your gut to microbes to rebalance if you are nourishing yourself properly, if you're giving yourself these ADK vitamins, these amino acids, uh, giving your body what it needs to build itself. Um, so 
a healthy diet should be satisfying, nourishing, fulfilling. It should be full of these traditional foods that give us these building blocks for life. Uh, it should be full of the egg yolks and the dairy, if you can tolerate it, and the, the fatty seafood, the salmon. Uh, it should be full of the steak and the um, uh, other essential animal foods. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope this helps reframe the idea of health to one more of nourishment. And so you can understand why you tend to be cycling through these cleansing and binging on carbs uh, cycles. And uh, yeah, tune in for the next video.